Hi, I'm Jean Power, editor of Bead Magazine, and in this film we're going to be looking at wire work tools. Once you start doing wire work, you realise there are lots of tools you can buy and you might be tempted by lots of them. We're going to look at pliers today and the different ones. I'll um, talk about them and let you know which ones are essentials and which ones are added extras, which you might not need the first time you start using um, wire, but that you'll definitely be more interested in once you do a bit more. First essential pair are going to be wire cutters. These are obviously going to, you're going to use them to cut your wire and they need to be strong enough to cut your wire. Most cutters out there will cut up to one millimetre, one and a half millimetre thick wire, so you should be fine. If you're going to be working with hard wire, which is a lot thicker than that, you might have to just ask the shop where you're buying the cutters if they'll be able to cope with that. The best cutters to use are what are called side or flush cutters, and these are where the blades sit over to one side, and they're called flush cutters or semi-flush cutters, because if you imagine when wire is cut, it doesn't get a clean cut, it's actually squashed by the cutters, but um, flush or semi-flush will give you where at least one piece of the wire is cut flatter than the other side. When you're cutting with wire, always use the side, which is the flat side, against the wire you want to keep. These cutters, um, they don't have a dent in, too much of a dent in this side. They do have a slight dent, but some of them come with a big groove in there. And if you imagine, if you were to put the groove up against your work, even if as close as you would cut it, you'd be you know, up to half a centimetre away from where you actually want to cut. So always putting the flat side against where you want to cut will give you a much closer result and a much neater finish with less sticking out. The next pliers are what's called round nose pliers. These are called that because their jaws and their noses are round. They're rounded all the way and you can see they go from pointed or a lot smaller up to a larger size, so they taper down towards the point. They do come in different sizes. These ones go down to quite a fine point. These ones here, they're a lot bigger and they don't go quite as far down. And you'll also find ones that are a lot finer. When you start doing wire work, you might want to invest in a few different pairs, just depending on the size loops you want to make. Round nose pliers are perfect for making loops. That's what they're used for. Um, they're not good for gripping wire. That's mainly because, if you imagine, when I touch the wire with these, only a small surface of the jaws of my pliers is actually going to be in contact with um, the wire. And I won't get as good a grip, and also it means that all of the pressure that my hand is putting on the wire is being pushed into a much smaller place, and it will, you'll get dents into your wire it's very easily. You might be able to see it there. Whereas if you hold them with a pair of flat pliers, the pressure is spread out. And we'll look at that in a minute when we look at flat pliers. So round those pliers are perfect for making loops. When you make a loop with your pliers, if you imagine, it's mainly going to actually be your finger and thumb which make the loop. Your pliers are more than mould for you to work around. And whereabouts on the jaws you make the loop will determine the size of the loop. So if you want to make a small loop, use the end of your pliers. A much larger one, use further up. If you want to consistently get the same size loop every time, there are a number of tricks. One, you can draw on the jaws of your pliers with um, a permanent marker. You can also put some masking tape on there and draw on that. Or you can always use a certain part, say always use the base, so you know that you're always getting the same size loop every time. As you get more experience in your wire work, you'll realise that you do naturally start to use the same part of the pliers again and again, so your loops will even out. So don't worry too much at first. The next pair of pliers we use are a category that um, can often be mistaken. And the generic category name really is flat pliers. Um, and there are two main different types. Flat pliers basically are pliers with a flat inner jaw, such as these ones. There are two main um, variations. One, the flat nose pliers, which are flat inside and the jaws of them stay the same width all the way along. And the variation is what's called chain nose pliers. They're sometimes called snipe nose as well. And as you can see, they're flat inside, but they go into more of a point, so they taper down towards the end. Also, they're a lot more curved around the outside edge, so you can use them to make curves in your work. It depends what you're looking for. If you were to choose a pair, it's up to you which one. Um, if you're just using them to hold wire and make bends, either will do the job. 
different reasons why you might choose different ones. If you, you might choose a chain nose because they do go to a point, so you might want to get into areas as you're working. And you might choose flat nose because if you're using them to measure distances, say you're making a wrapped loop and you're making a bend, you will always get the same distance because they're the same width all the way along. So it's up to you. Lots of um, sets that you buy will contain both of them. So it's perfect. If you are going to be doing um, chain mail, opening and closing jump rings, you'll want two pairs of flat pliers anyway. So perhaps buy one flat nose and one chain nose and you've got the best of both worlds. A variation on the flat pliers is what's called bent nose pliers. These are like a chain nose in that they taper down to a point, but you can see they've actually got a bend in them. So these again are useful for getting into areas, also um, holding items because you can hold them across a ring um, rather than just using your chain nose ones, but they're quite handy just to get into areas and work. That's a variation on the flat pair. So your essential pliers you need are wire cutters, round nose pliers and a pair of flat pliers, chain nose or flat nose. The non-essential ones, but ones you really might like to buy once you start doing wire work, are things such as nylon jawed pliers. These are sold as being good for opening and closing jump rings, but I don't find them good for that because they don't grip the wire. They haven't got the metal contact that a pair of, say, flat or chain nose pliers will have. So you find struggle to grip and struggle to open and close work and you can't get in as neat. But what they are perfect for is taking advantage of the nylon jaws, um, which won't mark your wire, and using them to straighten your wire. If you have um, wire that as it's come off the coil it's slightly kinked or you've been working it then literally just grab hold of it with your nylon jaw pliers and pull and you'll see it starts straighten. If you do get to the kinks at the end don't worry once you've done it a couple of times you'll find that they all start to come out of your work but you can see that wire is a lot straighter than it was before but it's not marked. I could do that with flat pliers but with the metal um, jaws are likely to mark it and also working with metal on metal will toughen the wire whereas these won't toughen your wire they'll just straighten it so quite a useful tool next pliers which you might find useful are crimping pliers these are mainly used in stringing for um, squashing crimp beads but they're perfect for if you're doing a wrapped loop if you look at their jaws you can see they have two notches one that's nearest the handle is sort of a U shape. One towards the end is more rounded. And when you're making a wrapped loop, you can take advantage and use that rounded notch and just um, neaten off the end of your wire. If you watch our wrapped loops film, you'll see us actually using that in there. But so once you start doing wire work, you might want to invest in a pair of these. Another thing to consider when buying pliers is how they sit in your hand. Most pliers, the ends of the um, handles sit with the, literally just sitting in the palm of your hand. That's where your carpal tunnel pouch is. So constantly working, doing a lot of work is going to be putting pressure on the centre of your hand. You can now buy pliers, and these are them in the bent nose and also in the flat nose, where the handles are a lot longer. So they extend beyond the palm of your hand out towards the flat part here. So the pressure is spread over your hand and also not pressing directly in the centre. So just, you know, have a look for pliers with longer handles if you're going to be doing a lot of work. But still, make sure you take lots of breaks and stretch your hands and put the pliers down often. Don't just use them for long periods because they feel a lot more comfortable in your hands. I hope that's made some of the plier choices out there a lot clearer for you and helped you to decide which ones you need to buy and what you need to buy at the start and what ones you might want to choose to invest in later. Whichever pliers you choose, I hope you continue to enjoy your wire work and have fun making jewellery.